first off, thanks everybody for coming out, sticking around, and the organizers and all the acts before us. So let's give a round of applause for everyone that did it. Thank you. As Sebastian said, my name is Martin Gohari. I'm actually born and raised right here in Worcester, Massachusetts, a lovely little town that we have here. Uh, growing up, for me personally, was kind of interesting. My father is from Iran. My mother is born right here. So when I was a young kid, you know, I didn't really look like everyone else, if you know what I mean. I went to school with primarily all white students. Uh, basic names, um, something you'd find right out of the Bible, New Testament. Everyone's name was like Peter or Paul, John, uh, Irish background. And I was a kid, my name was Gohari. And of course, being in elementary school, um, you make fun of each other. So me being a little Persian boy with hairy arms, my name was Gohari, you know. Basic stuff like that. Uh, you know, go over to the friend's house. Their dad's outside playing baseball with them. I go home and we played soccer. Okay? So I had an interesting childhood. I used to think I was strange the whole time. I was like, something's weird. Something's not right with me. I'm just a little bit different. So it wasn't until I became a musician and got into like the whole performing arts field that I started to really kind of reflect and figure out who I truly was. Being an artist, especially when you first start, you're always trying to emulate your heroes, right? Copy what they do. And then it gets to a point where you do so much of it, and you're like, wait, who am I actually? And I've reached that point maybe about four years ago. You know, I was studying jazz. I was at New England Conservatory. I was traveling. I was playing a lot. But then, you know, I wasn't one of the students like my classmates who started piano really early or went to all the camps and practiced a bunch. For me, I started piano late. I was 17 years old. I just woke up one day. I was like, I'm going to play piano. And then, you know, my parents being supportive, they're like, yeah, sure. So they gave me lessons, they paid for it and all that, and I started playing. And then I just said to them, like my senior year of high school, like, I'm going to be a musician. And they said, you're crazy. You've only been playing for six months. Yeah, maybe do something else. You know, maybe try going to this field, that. But I was adamant. And I kept working at it, and I practiced, and I practiced, and I practiced. Now I'm like 25. I'm playing jazz. I love it gave me the freedom to improvise, right? But it's something just not connecting because once again, I wasn't like one of those students who were, had that ability that played at a young age, played classical, had the technique, had all the ability that goes along with it. So I had to figure something out, right? I had to play to my strengths. So I started looking within and I realized, okay, wait a minute. Maybe I should start looking at music from other cultures. And this is right around the time I started traveling more and more. Uh, you know, so I'm listening to this music. I'm listening to the music of South America. I'm listening to music that's coming out of New York. And I'm also revisiting the music that I heard growing up. So in addition to like American rock music and British rock music from my parents' generation, I'm also hearing a lot of Persian music, Persian classical music, traditional music, and finding that when I was very beginning learning piano, I was writing music that I thought was, didn't make sense, too simplistic. I actually was drawing from this tradition without even realizing it. So I started going further, deeper, deeper into it. It led me to composer John Zorn, who's based out of New York City. John Zorn is an American composer with Jewish background. He goes deeper into his Jewish background and created this whole breadth of literature, of music, like insane amount of music. The guys put out, I don't know, maybe like 1,100 different pieces of music, which is unheard of, right? Bach put out all this music, but you don't really hear composers today putting out this massive, massive work. So he had a thing called radical Jewish culture in which he was diving back into his culture growing up and then playing it, interpreting it. So that's why, you know, I'm thinking to myself, well, maybe I can kind of do the same, right? Because I'm, who am I as a person? I'm half, you know, I'm half Persian, half American, right? So I started going into this music, diving deeper, 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 deeper into it until I kind of came to this point of like, hey, I really love this music. I really love avant-garde jazz. And I really love music of South America. Even though there's no South American blood in me, I just really love this type of music. Uh, I came across the music of Astor Piazzolla, one evening, it was actually New Year's Eve, and this song came on, and it just like took me by. I literally stopped. It was, one of, it was like one of the few moments in life that like you hear about, like where you have to stop everything, what you're doing, and just like zone in and listen to it. So today, what I would like to do is kind of show you a couple of songs, I'll play three songs for you, two that were huge influences on me, and then one piece of mine that kind of combines these elements. So the first piece I'm going to start with is called Oblivion. It's a tango piece by Astor Piazzolla uh, from Argentina. Then from there, I'm going to go to a piece by John Zorn called Caret. And then at the end of that, I'm going to play my song called Prayer at Dawn that kind of combines the elements of South America with my Persian background. 
At this time, I would like to bring up my partner here in the music, Kathleen. She's going to be playing violin with me. So she's going to come on up. I'm going to take my seat at the piano. And we're going to play for you these three songs. So thank you for listening. Thanks again for coming out. So that was included by Master Pio's old tango piece. And the next one we're going to go to is Karet by John Zorn. This is again from the radical Jewish culture. So Karet actually is from older uh, Hebrew literature. And what it is is actually a punishment, a uh, decision from the community. So if you were to do something wrong, right, they would just expel you from the community. So kind of keep that in mind as you hear this.
originally um, out of frustration. Uh, everyone was reading a lot from Amnesty International, things along that nature, reading our involvement in the United States government, rather, I should say, uh, in the Middle East. So this one's kind of contemplative. Um, you know, you read these things about how we have essentially, you know, our army just killing innocent people and then basically lying about it and threatening other people there and getting away with it. So this is kind of, I was really angry, but it's one of those things we kind of have to like reflect on and think how we can be better people so we can prevent these kind of things. Once again, this is called Prayer Down. This is our last one. Thank you so much.